Hi everyone, Heidi Smith here from Flutter by Heidi. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based here in the United Kingdom and today I'm talking about Pretty Parasol which is a beautiful new stamp set which coordinates with our existing umbrella punch that we've already got which you may have bought as part of the bundle with Under My Umbrella which was in the previous ca um, catalogue. So that one very much about winter kind of rain and Wellington boots or galoshes whereas this one is all about spring and lovely parasols and some really pretty accents as well as a solid umbrella as well. So that's what I'm going to use along with one of my favourites, stitch shapes. So this is a really useful set um, and actually we're, we're going to create some frames which you can see and these are interlocking frames and I've used the accent flowers, done some colouring um, but uh, this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So away we go. So um, what I've done is that to create the frames I've used two of my um, the two middle sized stitched shapes and I've held them together with washi tape and that's twofold. One because I don't want to move once they're in my big shot. I don't want them to slip and overlap and damage each other and also it helps me create a nice even border. So all I'm going to do with that is pop that on my um, magnetic plates. So I've got a magnetic plate, I've got my very old, very well used um, top plate and then I'm going to put again another really old one on top. Now I'm not worried about these being scratched and damaged because it doesn't show on the frame but if you were doing a large image I keep a separate plate that I use for both embossing and for die cutting that I always keep on the top. So once that's been through, all you do is peel off the outside, push the middle out, keep that for another project for another day, and then pop your nail in between those or your pokey tool, and that will just pop out really nicely, like so. So you want three of those, and the middle one you're going to keep the same. And to get the interlocking element, um, because you can see it actually sort of feeds through, you're going to cut those as well. So you will need a card base, and this is 14 and a half by 21, scored at 10 and a half, and that's, um, I say that's, uh, that's all re re already done. And what I find, um, I'm, I'm going to put all my preparation, so that's my card, those are my rings, and then I'm going to do my umbrellas. Now, I'm going to do something slightly different. So these ones were stamped in Seaside Spray onto Seaside Spray card. But what I thought might be rather nice is if we did them slightly differently and coloured them. So I'm using my Memento ink. I'm going to be using um, uh, some um, a, a choice of, of ways of colouring. So you can either use your Stampin' Right marker in Highland Heather and if you haven't got that then I'm going to show you using your blender pen instead. So once you've got that you're going to grab your Stampin' Pierce mat and of course mine has I've popped it to one side somewhere and now of course can't see it. Oh well. Okay. Um, the reason you use a stamping pierce mat is to just make sure you get a nice um, impression. Now if you haven't got one, a mouse mat is always useful. Um, and I'm going to pinch my husband's mouse mat. Goodness knows what I've done with that. I literally had it moments ago. Do, you, do that happen to you when you're crafting? Use something, five seconds later, not visible. Ink it up well. When, you've, when you're using these stamps the first time, I would recommend giving them a good clean. Then just stamp down and up and you're done. And again on the other side. Like so. So I've already done one, which is why I'm not going to do three of them all in one go. But I just wanted to do two to show you um, how we've coloured those. The other thing I'm going to do is use my Highland Heather ink pad. And we're just going to ink that up. Now, as I say, I use Seaside Spray. If you wanted to use Purple Posy, that's obviously we haven't got the Purple Posy ink pad, but you could use your Stampin' Right marker for Purple Posy um, as well. So, just an alternative for you. So, once we've got those. 
So two ways of colouring these. So you first one is to grab your Stampin' Right marker. I'm just using the brush tip to colour those in, like so. And I do love the subtles. I think they're really pretty colours. Um, and this I like because it is a, it's actually, it is subtle, but it's still quite nice. It has a decent strength of colour. And obviously these are available in the family of, uh, of 10 subtles and the in colours are available in a family of five. So, you know, if, if you're just starting out, then the in colours are a great place to start because you just need to buy, to buy five and you've got some really lovely sort of colours to start off with. So the Rococo Rose um, in there as well. So once we've coloured that... So our second way of colouring, if we wanted to, so if you've got the Highland Heather Ink, just dab a clear block in the side there. Take a Stampin' Blend and then you can use that to come in and colour. And because you're using Memento, you're not going to get any um, bleeding from the, uh, from the Memento ink on that which you might get if you stamped it in a, a colour. And it gives a really pretty definition as well to our image. And I say you can just come in all the time, just dab it, and that means it's, you can do it as, as light or as dark as you want. Come, up, come over again if you want to. Just take your time. I've probably done it a little bit quickly there, so I'm just covering some of those gaps. And then you can just punch those out. Now, when you're punching, I've done it on a long slim piece because then you can come in and you can punch out like so. But I did say I wanted to try and do something with the um, with the uh, fringing. So we could just punch those out as they are, but let's have a go with the fringing that we've got. And I'm going to use this pretty little delicate scallop because it's quite narrow. And I think if we pop that, I'm going to, you've probably got a really good shot of my head there. I'm going to do my best to line that up without being directly above it. Okay, not bad. There we go. So let's have a go, see if, see if that works. So all I'm going to do now is at the very top is come just on the line and that gives me that fringing at the bottom. Like so, there we go. Not bad, that's like a... Okay, let's try that again. See if I can do as good a job the second time round. So again, I'm just hovering really close and lining that up. Yeah, I'm, again, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get good at this. No, let's, let's, not, uh, let's not brag. Okay, and then again, just line that up and punch. So that just gives that little subtle bit of fringing underneath, a little scalloped edge. Okay. Um, now I've stamped my two umbrella handles um, and you've got a choice of umbrella handles or um, um, or like parasol handles. I'm just going to cut that in half diagonally because I did them the wrong way around and I'll probably want a post-it note on the end there. So if ever you're using a little bit that doesn't, um, that you can't keep hold of, just attach it to a post-it note and feed that in. Because what you don't want to be doing is wasting lots of card. So just pop that, like so. Do the same with my second one. And I'm, the reason I'm trimming the bottom is because it's going towards the end of the punch. Um, and obviously when, when you're punching, it's got, it, it stops here. So you need to just keep it quite short at the bottom there. Look at that. Probably should have used a different post-it note. Hey. Ah, there we go. So as you can see, I'm just lining it up there. Now if you struggle with your hands, press it part way to hold it, then put it down and punch. Um, that way you, you'll, you'll keep um, your hands sort of still, uh, still have their strength. Okay, peel our post-it note pieces away, clear the debris. And so what we're creating is this pretty umbrella. I've got here. 
So if you flip those over, take off any bits of post-it note that you might happen to have attached. And I'm just going to come in and on this, I'm going to put the glue on the umbrella, not on the handle, just because it makes life easier. So I'm just popping a little dab of glue in line with the little point at the top. Like so, put my glue to one side. And then come in. Pop those to one side just to dry. And while those are working, working, while those are drying, we'll carry on working on our other pieces. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop our um, frames. Now the mini dimensionals are perfect for this. So if you just grab those, likewise, if you've got some mini dimensionals where you've got pieces left over on the side, those are great. Just snip part way up and you'll get lots of lovely little strips which are great for this. And what I do is I just pop, flip that over and pop those on sort of diagonals. And that's going to go in the middle there. So this one is going to come on here. So we want to snip where it's going to overlap. So I just mark with the nail and just snip straight. Don't be tempted, as I've been in the past, to snip at an angle because it then won't work. So if we pop this in place, that will just help with our placement to make sure we get it right. So you pop that in the middle. So we're then going to add to the, to the reverse of this one. So just think about where we're going to have it. So I'm going to pop some dimensional top and the corner and in this bottom corner just underneath. It's a bit like doing the Olympic, you know, you could do this to create the Olympic rings if you wanted to. And um, just snipping in between. So in this instance, this one's going to go just behind. Like so. And you see, you're not going to get the join. Just don't press it down until you're, until you're ready. Right. Okay. So I'm going to do the top bit. So, and then repeat it with that bottom one. So work out again where you want that cut to be. You've got two places here. So I'm going to just cut it here. And again, come in with some nice little pieces of dimensional. That's a little bit wide though, so I'm just going to Okay, and put a piece just below where that join is going to be. Take the backings off them. And this just, you know, it's a little bit more work, a little, you know, but with some preparation, that's fine. And you, obviously you could just hand cut some frames if you wanted to, or if you've got some ready bought ones. So feeding that one over, this one under. So just pop a frame there. lift that up slightly 
like so. So those are our frames. So now what we can do is pop our umbrellas because they've obviously dried. So I'm just going to pop some adhesive around the top of these. And just to show, I use both sides of the card sometimes in my preparation. Grab my next one. And again, you can pop those wherever you fancy. Because my frame on that one is a little bit more little, I'm going to just pop it up like so. And then my last one. Again, just going to make that just towards the top. That and that helps you with adding your glue. So, and then the last little bit is to come in, and this is unusual because I don't usually do this stamping at the last minute, but it's so easy with this little stamp. I'm just coming in and adding that into those little gaps that you can see with the And again, you could pop those at the top and the bottom if you wanted. I haven't left as much space on this one. All that remains is my sentiment. That if you wanted, you could put in a separate piece. But here we go. Wishing you warmth and sunshine. There we have a pair of pretty parasol cards. Showing you, again, stamping on the same colour with, with the same colour. Or stamping in black and filling in. Either is just as effective. Let me know if you have a preference. I don't, I don't know that I do. I think they're both pretty. I suppose I'm probably tempted towards the Highland Heather, but that's more the colour than anything else. Thanks for watching. Um, come back and see me again soon. And if you'd like to purchase the Pretty Parasol stamp set, pop along to my blog, flutterbyhide.co.uk, and follow the links. Or go to my shop, heidysmith.stampinup.net, and you'll find a button that says Shop. Click on that, and you'll find the stamp, My Stampin' Up Shop. Love to have you as a customer. Come back and see me soon. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos. Bye now.